understanding introverts, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself here from two perspectives though, as an introvert, I'm speaking to the healed introvert, hey Tia, and the unhealed introvert. And the reason why I can speak for both is because I was, was an unhealed introvert. And so I wanted to find, to find um, an unhealed introvert. An unhealed introvert is a person, first of all, that said, I can't be around people, I, I don't want to be around this person, simply because they throw chakra out of balance, simply because they're afraid, <clears throat> simply because they've been hurt, they have some kind of trauma attached to them, simply because they never got to know themselves just yet, right? That's what an unhealed introvert, when I'm talking about, not in this particular video, do introverts know. I'm not talking about that particular introvert. I'm talking about the healed introverts. And I speak as a healed introvert where I am, I no longer have any trauma type issues. I understand energy. I always did understand energy even when I was an unhealed introvert. I just couldn't express it and I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint if it was just mine sometimes or if it was the other person's. <clears throat> but now I have a better understanding of self. Getting to know yourself gets you to know other people outside of self because life is happening to you, not to you, right? And the thing that um, the healed versus the unhealed introvert have in common is the fact that both of them, they like to spend time alone. Hey, Ebon. Hey, Lawrence. Hey, woman, you're looking good. Thank you. I appreciate you. So both of them like spending time alone. One wants to spend time alone because of their trauma or whatever. But the healed introverts wants to spend time alone because they understand energy. And in their lonely moments in life, that's where they make God at. And being alone helps them to connect with their God self and be able to hear their God self. So what is it that I want you to know about the introverts? I want you to know that whether healed or unhealed, introverts understand that there's an energy exchange when you're next to another person. For example, your aura, we talk energetically about auras in spirituality. Auras, your aura, if you're just standing next to another person, your aura is like looping over. You could be like uh, up to like as far away as like 20 feet from that particular person. And that's an energy exchange that's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. With these two people. Because remember, we are really energy, frequency, and vibration. The physical is only 0.01 of it all. So this energy that I'm talking about is at 99.999%. And so if you could imagine, if you will, you remember Arnold Schwarzenegger played in that movie called The Terminator? And in The Terminator, when he was approaching a person, he would get like a readout in his visual, you know, perception of that person. If it was a female, male, you know, the height, you know, and other, where they lived or whatever. So just imagine energetically if you are as close as, you know, 20 feet next to a person. Because you all are close together, you're making an energy exchange. This ain't even, this don't even go to sex, you know, with the soul ties. I ain't even getting into that. I'm just talking about a random stranger, right? There's an energy exchange. And you know this to be true whether you are introvert or not. Because sometimes you'll be, you'll be maybe in a store or whatever. And you're like, let me, let me move. Let me get away from this person. Because maybe you don't understand it, but you're feeling something. You're feeling that read, that energy exchange. <laughs> and because of this energy exchange, you're picking up that person's trauma. That person's, that person's pain that, that what's on that particular person's mind it's almost like you're picking up that person's land book of life their, their subconscious programming their akashic records it's, it's just you getting a loop of theirs with yours because your energy their energy and your energy is pulsating like right mm -hmm. so because of this energy exchange introverts like myself we rather not be too close to people that we don't know. And if we are, we don't like to be too close to them for a while because we would rather feel good on our energy. And because introverts can read other people at a heightened level, it may be tied into other gifts or fruits of the spirit if you're from religion. 
they sometimes don't like to be in large crowds because of, because of this thing, right? Yeah, this is so true, but unbelievable. Yes, it is, Jeffrey. And so, like for me, for example, I could go to the mall and I have to shop in the stores that have, you know, that red shirt on that full way. And they have a small, medium, and large, and I could hurry up and grab that medium so I could get up out of there. Hey, Taryn. <laughs> True, this is me, a hermit. Yes, I'm a star. Yeah. So, I need to know, before I go to that mall, I need to know, okay, I'm going to the mall for a red shirt. And so, I can't go to, like, you know, you're going to catch me, like, in a Burlington, kind of like. Like, oh, no, it's going to take me too long to find a red shirt. So, I would rather the go maybe to... You know, like an Ann Taylor or something. I might spend more money, but I know when I get there, Ann Taylor gonna have all the red shirts on there for me, and I can grab the red shirt that I came up in there for, and I can get up out of there. Because as soon as I walk in that mall, I'm around all kind of strange people, and I'm within their radius. I'm within that 20 feet that I'm talking about, so I'm picking up on them. And I can hear that and I can feel that. And I I used to not understand this part of me where it was like, <clears throat> I didn't want to go to the mall. I didn't want to be around people because it was like too much. I would go up in there and I would just be like, just running, just hauling, just to get the red shirt, for example. I used to dance and we used to sometimes go to different venues to dance and to some of the venues we went to you know it was maybe having a party so people would be drunk or whatever just about a ball or whatever in the party and so i would say i would like sit outside of the club or you know the reception hall and tell somebody hey y'all call me when it's our turn to get up because i knew when i went in there they was gonna have people with darker spirits being that people was drinking and stuff like right and so I knew that they would have people that had problems, you know, for example, we in a relationships. People go to the mall when they having problems, when they done got cheated on. You read all kind of different things when you tapped into this here type of energy and knowing of self. When they done got cheated on and hurt and when they about to go out to party or if they at the party and they drunk and then they want to cheat or they want to hook up with somebody. And so you, if you, if you are in tune to self, like I have always been, but just didn't understand this part of myself. When you attune to self, you feel that. You can read that. When you're a seer, you can read that. And people people who can't see, they make you doubt yourself and be like, no, I, I got to get out of here. It's, something ain't right. It's chaotic. You don't feel that. <laughs> the feeling and the hearing. I tell my husband, yeah, it's too much. I can hear everything. Yeah. And so until you get into a place where you best understand how to, to control or clear the energy, this could harm you. This could make you be more of a hermit. This could make you not want to be around people. In the third grade, I had the most beautiful science teacher. You look exactly like her. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Slap. I appreciate that. So it'll make you not want to be around people. And then on top of that, you have your own trauma that you may not have healed just yet. And you might not understand this. But this is something that introverts know in their healed self and in their unhealed self. And let me tell you a story about how I discovered this here in a deeper sense for myself. In my journey, I had a moment in my life where I worked in construction. I, I worked most um 22 years in in the utility industry and i had several jobs there and one of the jobs i got when my okay this is low frequencies this is right before i begin to evolve but right before i wanted to learn about the law of attraction but i ain't know it just yet so i need to let you know that i was on low frequency in order to attract this particular person so anyway I had just got my second degree and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be beautiful. I'll be able to post for a job in corporate America and, and you know, get a, you know, competitive pay, da, da, da. But the company began to do a reorg. The company did a reorg and I got sent to construction by the lineman. <clears throat> I didn't like that because it was almost like, who, who, who wants a job that somebody placed them in? You want to be able to post for a job, you know? I thought it was my time, but I got pushed back. And not only that, 
everybody in the company was trying to post for a job because they wasn't liking what they got put at. And then some people was getting laid off. So it was the hardest time right then for you to move, you know, around in the company. So I was stuck in construction for that particular time. And this was all purposeful for my journey. I have no regrets and this is not a sad story. So don't, don't start with the sad stuff. I'm, a pr I'm proud of this year because it was part of my becoming. Anyway, because I was on low frequency though, and I was, that was when I was, I could, I was going to work at this time crying every morning because I wasn't happy with where I was. I had to leave my children every morning. It, you know, I was the type of mother that used to like to bring my children to the bus stop and stuff. And I couldn't do that no more. I had to drive farther. Then I got in this position and I worked in the same room, the same office. The office couldn't have been, but maybe a, I don't know, maybe a six by six room where we were literally like you all, the camera there, I'm here, her seat there, my seat there, face to face with one another. Mind you, I told you that my frequency was low. So guess what? She came in, her frequency was low because you're going to only attract that, that way you are, right? This lady, my frequency was really low. I told you I was a crybaby and everything, right? But this lady was a crybaby too. She matched me, right? <laughs> and that's just how the universe do. It was showing me me in her. So her crybaby issue was, and I'm not making light of it, but she was in like a low cancerous six sick state of being losing her mind and going just great every day it was just something in that office with this particular person and i no longer wanted to be in that office because i didn't want to pick up on that energy but at the same time i was learning about the law of assumption and positive thinking and all right i knew she carried this negative energy with her but when I started, the only way that we attracted one another was because I had some negative energy up in that room too. But when I began to learn about the law of assumption and attraction, I started learning how to tune her out and increase my frequency. This lady, she, um, she was really, really petty and spiteful and she did all kinds of little crazy things. But even in the midst of her doing crazy, I knew this one thing. I believed this one thing that if I increase my frequency, all of the, you know, little slide things she was trying to do and all, you know, in, in trying to trigger me, you know, because she wasn't unhappy where she was in life. All of that, if I could ignore that and I could stay focused on feeling good, I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop this crying. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to find my happy here. I'm going to change my frequency and I'm going to feel good no matter what's going on. Everything is working out for me. I'm looking for the good, the good, the good. And so what happened was I had just got in my conscious journey and I began to bring amethyst to work. <laughs> yeah, I began to bring my amethyst. I was getting into crystals. She would have all kind of chaotic excuses about why she couldn't do jobs and this and that and the third. I was learning about energy and, and, and alignment. So I would go to work and I would start putting my headsets on, right? I would put my headsets on and I would be listening to 432 hertz of healing energy and frequency. And I was tuning that energy out in an effort to save myself and to get me up out of there. <clears throat> I even began at that time writing things down, positive affirmations, just writing them down, folding the paper toward me as if I wanted this here energy to come to me, what I wrote down and cast the energy away from me that I was experiencing. See, I was changing my frequency. And I mentioned in that story to you because that's a way to get out of a situation where you feel like there's no other way out. You gotta, you gotta be out while you're in. See, I had checked out mentally. So it was like nothing and nothing that she could try to do. Did this lady try to give me some food that wasn't even good before? This lady would try to lie on me, all kind of things. But I had to be unshakable with my energy, right? Beautiful person. Beautiful lesson learned from that. Beautiful lesson learned from me. It was growth for me because it taught me how to master my emotions, how to master self, how to avoid looking at the winds and the waves. 
I'm so happy for that moment in life. It also taught me my superpowers. It taught me my superpowers because at one point in my life, I didn't know I had one, had any. And I began to write down the fact that I didn't want to be around this person no more. I wrote it down and I was like, away from me, no harm to you, da 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 on this paper. I wrote it down and I released the resistance and I forgot all about writing it down. And if you've been following me for a while, you heard me say that story before that I wrote this down, but I never shared who or where, who I was talking to or where I was at that point in time. But that's the place that I was. <laughs> and I, I hid that particular paper and after I wrote that paper, I had hid that paper in maybe a week or two, I revisited that paper. And when I read that paper, I said, oh my God. This stuff works because after the day after I wrote that away from me, no harm to you. You have served your purpose. I have learned my lesson. I am ready for the next chapter in my life. I'm thankful for my growth and my expansion. After I wrote that on that paper, I ain't see that person no more in the physical reality. That's a way through mindfulness. You can get out of experiencing the energy, energetic exchange for the auras or the energy fields looping together. You could also do this by music. I mentioned that already. People like to do this here from sit by switch sage and, and crystals, clear quartz crystals, amethyst crystals, rose, because that, that's a frequency of love. When you are vibrating on this frequency, when you end up increasing your frequency higher than the frequency that you think is manipulating you, then the higher frequency going to win. Yeah, and it's kind of, you can see this kind of thing, like when, when people playing sports or whatever, and, and somebody, somebody else getting beat or whatever, and, and so the other player probably get upset, really, really upset, because the high frequency da person dancing, and the low frequency person getting upset, the high frequency person end up dogging them out, end up donking on them end up beating them real, real bad because the higher frequency person is going to win. And so I was the higher frequency person in that moment. <laughs> so here, what I'm saying here is two people can be up to 20 feet, you know, in distance with each other and over 13.5 since the foundation of this recreated reality Billion years of information is being exchanged. <laughs> so this is why it's really important that you pay attention to who you're around. This is why Ramon used to say, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Because what happens now, if you stay with this particular person, see, if I would have stayed around this particular person and my mind wouldn't have strive for better or want it um, to evolve, then I would have been a, began, began to be even a more negative person than what I was. I would have got in that rut, in that momentum because the energy exchange was happening and it would have been hard for me to come out because I would have began to be just like her. You ever seen or heard people in relationships that finish each other's sentences? This is why. Introverts know this here. This is why. You ever seen two women <laughs> around each other for so long, then they, then they cycles. They cycles begin to happen at the same darn time. They begin to have their ministration at the same time because they've been around each other for so long. This energy exchange is happening. The same energy exchange that I'm talking about. Hey, Sean. Hey, Rita. So this is why it is so important that who you are around has like frequency like you. This is why, <laughs> this, for example, yesterday, yesterday was Super Bowl, now I ain't into no Super Bowl, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Uh, I just found out the day before yesterday that the Eagles was playing, and when I sat down, I asked who the heck was the other player. I didn't know. I didn't even know the Super Bowl was actually coming because I don't even have no TVs up in this house and I could live without a TV for the rest of my life. I have TVs, but I just never put them up in there. Because <laughs> I am on a journey of evolving in my own mind, in my own programming that I don't like outside programming. But on yesterday, I went to visit somebody for the game, right? <laughs> hey, big, big bull. I love you on the morning show. That is so funny. <laughs> so 
anyway, I went to go and visit somebody to watch the game. And being there, I knew in my mind, I'm not going to watch this whole game now. Because I'm one of them introverts that know. <laughs> I, I'm one of them introverts that know about energy exchange. But greater than that, I'm also an introvert that don't like spending my time, my thoughts on something that's really not enjoyable for my passion. It's not making me feel good. I'm just existing. I'm also an introvert that like being alone with me sometimes, you know? I like to hear my voice. Like 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 movies that's like maybe three hours and stuff long. Oh, no, nah, nah, I'm not about to do that. I, I, I'd rather quantum jump to where I want to go for three hours. Three hours for a movie? Oh, no, just tell me what they was doing on there. <laughs> so as an introvert, whether you a healed introvert, or you an unhealed introvert, we are picking up on frequencies from other people around us. And I didn't understand this, you know, when I used to be have, have to be in the room with other people, you know, on the job. Even the cubicle style set up in corporate America, you are picking up on the energy of everybody on that, that row of that cubicle. And if there's 20 feet of an aura we're talking about, then it could most likely be the next row of everybody over there on that row. And then the other row on this side of you. So here we are, you picking up on the energies of all these people and they're expecting you to work while you, your body energetically is picking up on 13.5 billion years, because the equivalent to everybody's subconscious mind, years of their Akashic records is looping into yours, but yet you're supposed to be working, but yet energetically, you picking up on all of this here. And not even knowing how to clear it. That's why it becomes so chaotic to or introvert. That's why it could be so draining just to go to work for an introvert because now they got to put on. And in corporate America, for me as an introvert, now you got to, they like to shake hands. <laughs> yeah, it is complicated. Mara's on the way. I'm excited. Oh, I'm happy for you. Oh, yeah, I saw your order. I saw your order. Thank you for your support. So now you got to shake hands. What well, Chris was, we'll stop that. I, okay. Now you got to shake hands. And when you shake hands with another person, I was so happy when COVID happened, y'all. I was like, oh, we got an excuse not to shake hands. But I didn't have, I was in corporate America. And every time, you know, I work with contracts on my last job before I retired. I'm going to get to that crystals. I heard your um, comment. And so when I was on contracts, you know, my, my, my vendors would come in and they would want to go to lunch and all that, right? And, you know, when they get there, they want to shake hands. And it wasn't about being rude, about not wanting to shake hands. It was the fact that I knew that even shaking hands was a more powerful energy exchange. Palm to palm uh, energy exchange. So much so, I always knew about my energy. So much so, there was a Caucasian lady who would come up in my office and she would rub me on my shoulder. And I asked her, I said, could you please get your hands off of me? And she's like, oh, you've got such good energy. I love touching me. I love touching you. I said, yeah, I know what you're doing. You're trying to take my energy from me. Could you stop touching me now? <laughs> And so, because I'm telling you this, because other people know this, especially when you vibing high, they be eager to want to shake your hand. Oh, hi, how are you? To zap some of your energy from you. That's your life force. And but one day, I remember, there was a guy, there was a guy, one of my vendors that came up in the office and he had to mess, I guess he had to put his little brood or whatever it was on, on his hand. And this actually was the last time, but this was before... COVID had happened. This was the last time I shook a hand. After this, he, I, I, I act like I had something in my hands, or I, I would be like, "Oh, I have sinuses. Oh, I have a cold. I just lie, lie myself out of the handshake because now I ain't shaking no more hands after this." I shook a man's hand, and he had to put on his little brood or whatever. And after I shook his hand, I was talking to him, and I put my hand that I shook his hand with, not thinking because I'm working and talking, and I put it on my neck. 
And all of a sudden, I could feel in my neck this brood or whatever this strong cologne was, like, pulsating in my neck. Like, it was literally getting, like, in flames almost in the inside, like I couldn't swallow. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? And I smelled my hand. I smelled his root or whatever, and I run to the restroom, and I just put some water on it to, you know, to soothe it. And I washed his little brute, whatever that was, one of them strong men colognes. I'm saying brute, I don't know what the heck that stuff was. But then from that moment, I was like, you know what, I'm not about to shake these random hands no more. My sister did massage therapy. She called those people energy vampires. Yes, they are. Because they know about energy. And there's a low. So they, since there's a low, they're trying to reach out on other people to get as much energy for the day. And hers was real low. So after that, I was so happy when COVID had came. When COVID had came, I was like, oh, good. Social distance to introvert? Oh, yeah. I like that. Social distance, I ain't got to shake hands. We do the little elbow or the fist pump. And so I act like I ain't want to do the elbow or the fist, fist pump. Now, I wasn't one that went and got no vaccination, but I would be like, oh, you know, COVID, you know. I, I'm not even scared of that kind of thing in my physical reality. I'm conscious, you know. That stuff That stuff is energetically transformed. That's how my program goes. But I'm like, oh, no, COVID, we, mm -hmm, we can't, we can't shake hands today. <laughs> That was the only time that I would mention COVID that and when I went to the store or something and, and some man would be like, hey, hey, come here, come here. I'm like, oh, no, social distancing. I'm sorry. If it was meant to be, I'd see you somewhere else. Social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> but introverts know this. So if you know introvert, energetically, this is what's going on. They understand this and they might not be able to articulate this here to you. But back to the question that I was I was holding off on answering. So here we go with, with how you could clear this. There are crystals that could help you clear this energy. Clear quartz, for example. Clear quartz. I, it, and you remember it by its name because it clears energy. Yeah. It allows you to clear energy that way. I'm also talking about the energy that you picked up out there while you was at work. See, when you make this energy exchange, what happens is you bring in some of that energy back home with you. So you want to have like clear quartz readily available on you, around you, maybe in your car when you get off. And, and, and so you want to like um, hold your uh, clear quartz, maybe put it by your, around your heart or just like rotate it as if you're like releasing the energy away from you, you know. This is mindfulness too at the same time. You got to believe that this here is going to work. If you, don't, if you don't believe it, don't even waste your money on no crystal. Then amethyst. Amethyst would be the reason why I say amethyst because it's more or less for the crown chakra. And we talked yesterday about how the higher chakra pools of energy are multiplied by like a thousand. So amethyst is about the Christ consciousness and getting to know thyself. So you carry an amethyst with you, you had a high frequency already. Like the Christ conscious frequency. So, so none of them low frequency people in corporate America or wherever you met them at can, can probably penetrate or vibrate at that frequency. Not if you had no word, not if you had no party. They ain't really vibing way up there. <laughs> you know, not around drunken people and this and that and the dirt. So when you, if you have to be around these type of people, remember amethyst, clear quartz, or the rose quartz crystals. Those are really, really high frequency. The rose, it has to do with the heart. So that's a love energy, right? And the amethyst is a crown chakra. And then the clear quartz crystal, that's just clearing energy. You could use either one of them for clearing energy, to be honest with you. And so in the physical, another thing they'll use is the uh, sage. You know, like they'll do it like when they buy in houses, for example, because that's another way. When you're buying a used house, for example, even this year, new construction home, I did it here. You want to walk around with the sage being burnt to clear the energy and lift the energy of even who, the builders, you know, whoever frequency or, or aura or Akashic records, subconscious thinking, those thoughts, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So they're still vibrating. If there was, if there was in your home before you, it, it was, it's vibrating until you cast it out. And so you will want to open up the front and the back door and just walk with the sage in every room and just 
you you start at the front door, you go to every room. It's if you pull it, you just saying, you just saying, hey, I'm casting you away. You are no longer welcome here. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Meet me at the back door. It ain't no right or wrong way of doing this here. Just do it with the intent that you are manipulating the energy and what you say go. And believe. No, 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 no. Cancel that. Know that when you get to the back door, know that it's gone. Know that you just clean and clear the aura in your home. And so sometimes when you're introverted, you don't understand how to do this. And so you end up being maybe out of breath, you know, drained, don't want to be around people. But a healed introvert can be around people and not get drained. Because here's the thing. And so what I'm saying healed and, and unhealed, I'm saying you either conscious or unconscious. That's, there's only two different people. Now, we could call them healed or unhealed, conscious or unconscious, but there's only two types of people in this physical reality. So, a more conscious introvert know that they could still go out there. <laughs> they could still go out there. Like yesterday, for example, I still went to the so-called Super Bowl party as an introvert and didn't care about Rihanna being pregnant. Didn't care about the little... Uh, sign language lady because guess what when Rihanna and the sign language lady came on I had already made it into a bedroom where I was uploading my videos from last night where I was doing mindfulness while the party was going on I heard the people laughing and you know and screaming at you know about the game so I came and I was like y'all having a really good time huh it's like that's really really good and I, you know, and I ate a little bit of the little healthy stuff that they had there and still walked away because a introvert, a healed conscious introvert won't let what's going on mess with their energy anymore because now they know how to recharge themselves. They know how to recharge themselves. So think about it like this here. All things of energy, frequency, and vibration, you got to get to a point where you can graduate to a point. Well, you are the source of the energy. So think about God in its totality. Well, God's energy don't get low. <laughs> like God in, in its totality still makes the sun shine. The trees still get in their rain that they need. You know, the universe don't get tired. So you... As within, so without. You are the universe. So you got to learn how to manipulate the energy to the point where you don't get tired, where you could deal with it and you won't be resenting or um, sluggish about going to the store, <laughs> about being around people around the Super Bowl game. This did grow though, because let me tell you something. When I first started talking, I'm the type of introvert that it used to drain me just to talk to people all my lives in the beginning. I would have sweat rolling down my back, palm sweating, and I would be so mentally fatigued that I just had to lay down after life. Not just day before yesterday, I did a four hour live. And I was so rubbed up after the live. Y'all, let me tell you what happened after the live. When I, when I, when I left after the live, I got, I went for a ride and I was riding and my GPS, I'm in good spirits, good energy. I mean, I'm on 10 and my GPS on my phone wouldn't show me where I was going in this new neighborhood. And so I text somebody to tell them to give me, screenshot me some directions and send it to me because my GPS got me in a bad spot. I don't, I can't see nothing. And I'm looking down at that. Meanwhile, the police officer is on the side of the road and he pulled me over. And he came up to the car and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, what you want? <laughs> but I was high. I'm high frequency, right? When he pulled up to me, he was smiling at me and I smiled at him. He was a little handsome, little Mexican police officer. Really nice guy. He had really good energy. Peep the word, good energy. His energy messed with my good energy. Even though I had a minor distraction because I'm on the phone trying to find out where I am. The energies met. And he told me, he said, um, you know you were speeding? 
I said, what? I was speeding. I was like, no, nah, I don't think I was speeding because I'm lost. And I was trying to slow down to find out where I'm at. Well, what, how, how fast you supposed to? <laughs> I told the man, I said, how fast you supposed to go up in here? Two? <laughs> Two miles an hour? Because <laughs> I was really going slow, right? This is energy, though. His energy met my energy. He smiled with him. I mean, at me, and I smiled. He took my insurance and in, in in my my driver's license and in registration. And when he when I was giving it to him, I I turned around and I kind of was startled because they had another police officer on this side of my car. And I was like, "What's going on?" And I look, and I put my hand on the steering wheel at this point. I and, and I said to him, "I'm like, what's going on? They got two of you." was doing nothing and you <laughs> and you to call your partner <laughs> he said no ma'am we drive together he's with me and I was like oh okay and I gave him the information and as soon as this man walked to his truck I got in my mind's eye and I said no it can't be he can't be writing me a ticket no I feel amazing going on this can't be uh -uh. I'm about to get no ticket I ain't get no ticket mm -mm. I'm not, I ain't even worried about that I know I'm not about to get no ticket I just got off of this here good life and I'm on this high frequency ain't no way ain't no way I don't know why I met him maybe to give him a smile or something but it ain't for him to give me no ticket he told me he was like I'm coming right back with the paperwork I was like, oh, I don't know what kind of paperwork you're going to have. In my mind's eye, this is what I'm saying. I don't know what kind of paperwork you're going to have. Because I know you felt this energy exchange. I know you picked up on my current feeling. <laughs> the fact that I just got off of a live where I was tapped into infinite intelligence. And you're not about to bring me down to no ticket frequency. Ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no way. Ain't happening. The man came back with a little his little um, clipboard. And he was asking me to sign. And I still in my mind said, no, ain't no way. I know you didn't write me no ticket. I know you did not write me no ticket. And he was like, well, I'm only giving you a warning, but we have to write up the warnings now. So it's not a ticket. Let me just get you to sign right here, though, and you can go about your way. And better yet, I can help you get where you're going. I will get my cell phone and I'm going to show you the, the directions on my cell phone and, and show you the map of where you need to be. Because I was lost. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds more like it. You see, even things like that, when you vibrate on a frequency with low vibration, other people can pick up on you. Police officers, when you when you rush in and fatigued and think, oh, I might get stopped if I don't slow down. When you thinking that, you draw that kind of stuff energetically to you. Because life happens through you. But you begin to understand that if my frequency is high, what's happening in my physical reality is I'm just bobbing and weaving through the bull crap. And anybody like a police officer or, or, or the boss or the doctor or the judge or whatever, they, if they come into your reality while your energy is way peaked up or if you had your crystals or if you just sage, if they come into your reality, they coming up in there for assistance for your greater good. Not to bring you down because they can't bring you down. You high. You're the one manipulating the energy. You're the one that's tapped into infinite intelligence. That's why I sat there and I'm like, no way, I cannot possibly. I just had got off the live. It was a live that I was telling you all, look, I got to go. I got a little timer here, but I got to go. And I was talking <laughs> about the 144,000. I was like, I can't, I can't get off no lies talking about the 144,000 and go get a ticket. This don't even make no common sense to my, to myself. So do introverts know? I'm willing to bet that they have healed or unhealed introverts. And all I'm saying here is conscious and unconscious introverts that know this, but probably don't know how to express this. And they probably also being judged by their reflections of being antisocial. Or being stuck up, maybe.
<laughs> hey, Joey. I'm here just for a few on my lunch break. Oh, hey, Ms. Benzo. Thank you for jumping in. They probably don't understand because some of the reflections, because this used to happen to me when I was an unhealed version of myself. People be saying that I'm stuck up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you too much. No, no, you don't understand. You, you don't feel that. Everybody not feeling what you feeling. I also, there was a moment where, where I had this, this office where everybody would sit there by the window and they, they would smoke their cigarettes. They would vent and complain. The office window was like right here behind me. As an introvert, it's just a glass window. Energy can pulse it through that window. So as an introvert, I would feel that. And so when it was that time for cigarette breaks or whatever, I, I closed the blind. Not that the blind stopped that darn energy, but I would close the blind. And people would say, what? What's wrong? Why are you? It's like, Ugh, I just need a moment. I just need a moment. <laughs> I just, I'm just picking up on a lot of, I'm just picking up on, the, I'm only on 13.5 billion years of, of your lifetimes. Yeah, I'm only picking up on that. And if they got about six of y'all out there, it's 13.5 times six. Plus I'm dealing with me, trying to send to me. Do introverts know this? And if you have or know an introvert in your circle, now that if you are an extrovert, now you know this. Because whether they're healed or unhealed, they pick up on this. Now the extroverts, that's a different story because they, 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 they light up when it's time to get the attention. <laughs> a lot of the extroverts, they, they, they don't, I'm not picking on them or anything, but they don't often enjoy the lonely moments of life. They're on another type of journey, you see? But for an introverted person such as myself, if I could speak for the others, and y'all let me know in the comments if I'm wrong here. Yeah. But even when I was not healed, when I, when I wasn't a healed version of myself, and when I was nervous maybe to speak, when I didn't know that I had a gift of discernment, I felt the energy of other people. And I could tell you upon getting close to them if that was a good energy or not. Now I can, I can, oh, I could sit there and look at them for a second and I, I, I know everything about them. I know everything about them. There you go. See, they, they agree. I know everything about them because now, now I'm, now I'm a conscious introvert. Now I'm a healed introvert. Now I can look at, so I, what I, I can do. Um, yes, definitely. I can, I can, I can look at a, a profile picture. I don't have to go to the profile, look at the videos. I can look at the profile picture. Oh, hmm. okay, okay. <laughs> the people in my physical reality. <laughs> they they call me the little the little Miss Keo lady because I can read people. Was because I, I, I've always been this introverted person, though, that knew this but didn't, couldn't articulate this to the best of my ability. And I know they got some other empaths out there. They might call themselves empaths, introverts. They might even call themselves some time, if that's what you want to call yourself. But if you are so called introvert, we have this thing in common. It's a beautiful, it's really your gift. When you open up all of your chakra pools of energy, you'll see it as a gift. It's not a curse, it's a gift. Because as soon as I begin to speak, as soon as I begin to, sometimes it gets too busy for me. Oh yeah, it does. As soon as I begin to heal my heart and in love anyway, and heal from my traumatic issues, you know, little daddy, little, little girl issues and stuff like that, that I had with daddy, when I heal that, my throat chakra, my self-expression, which was the thing that I was trying to hold on and not speak in front of people, the heart ended up opening up my self-expression. And then I began to be able to speak my truth. And so then when I began to speak my truth, it was like my third, <clears throat> excuse me, my third eye and my Christ consciousness expand. My kundalini energy rose. And then I finally got in balance with myself. 
And so after going through that cycle and becoming conscious, now I'm in balance with myself. Now I can recharge myself. And I don't, I don't need to sit there and say, it's too overwhelming. I can't go. I'm debilitated in this particular area because of such and such. No, 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 no. Not after you become totally conscious and learn how to manipulate the energies and learn how to use. See, I went through the stage already with the crystals. I went through the stage already with the Tibetan bowl. I went through the stage already of writing the affirmations. I went to the stage already of learning how to recharge my own energy so that nobody outside of me can drain me. So it's regardless of, regardless of me being around now, a person who's chaotic, like that lady that I was talking about earlier, if that lady, which now, because I'm healed, energetically, she won't be drawn to me. But if that lady, was somehow to, to be on the road while I was on the road, which I'm, I'm saying all of this is energy. I'm bobbing and weaving energetically from, from energies that's not serving me. But if, if I had an encounter like that with a negative person, when I pass them, it will be that very moment when they decided they're going to have a good day today. Just like the police officer. Being that I was on 10, being that I was on 10 and I was on that road at that time, it had to be the moment when he was happy. It had to be the moment when he was deciding, you know, today's a beautiful day. I'm just going to give somebody grace. Because the police officers, they were hot and heavy this weekend because out here is where the Super Bowl event took place. They were all over the place. And the one that decided to pull me over was a happy one that just gave me a warning and helped and assist me to get to the place that I was going because I was lost. So, so what I'm saying here is equivalent to in the biblical text where he said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. I'll make the people work for you. Yeah, I'll make them work for you once you renew your mind and know who you are and know how to tap into your innate ability to tap into source, to your divine birthright. Whether you are introvert or not, if you're not healed just yet and you are introvert, know that it's coming. Know that all that you have to do is work on you. Know that all that you have to do and where you need to start is opening up your heart. Because the heart is an electromagnetic field of energy. It has enough power to open up all other chakra pools of energy in your body. And once you open up that heart chakra, you begin to heal that solar plex, maybe that ego that you might have. Maybe it is that sacred plex, I mean that sacred chakra where, where maybe, maybe you were molested or something. You know, when you were a little girl, a little boy. Maybe it's the root chakra. But once you open up your heart, maybe you it was a root chakra because maybe your mom or daddy left you or, or put you up for, you know, foster care or whatever, or, or they passed or something. Maybe maybe you never saw them. And so those are the type of people that get their root chakra out of balance. But all you got to do, no matter what chakra pool of energy it is, all you got to do is open up your heart. See, I'm telling you about the sage, I'm telling you about the frankincense, I'm telling you about the clear quartz and the amethyst, but really, you're going to be the most powerful crystal that you're going to ever own. Hey, manifestation, thank you for being here. Transform into a great being, yes, the ego. It could be a stumbling block, but no matter what tools you use, there's going to be a time, God, a time and a season for all things. There's going to be a time where you're going to put away. You can put away. I'm not saying don't get the uh, crystals. Go ahead and get them. Just like you can say, at one point in your journey, you might have to go and get the fruit. You might have to go, go and get the herbs. You might have to go get the Tibetan bowl. But all of these are different states of your becoming. You got to get keep on going because you're going to forever be a student. You got to keep on going to the place. You want to arrive to the place where you're just being God all by yourself. To the place where you know how to recharge your own energy. And you don't need the crystal to the place where you know, not because you believe like we did in religion, the place where you know that you are the most powerful crystal that you will ever know, that you will ever own. 
and that you could secrete your own serotonin without any type of herb, just through mindfulness. That you don't even have to go and get loaded or get high with no weed or any 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 <laughs> any mushrooms or anything like that. Because you know how to secrete your own dimethyltryptamine. <laughs> you could take a trip on your own because you have everything already to do those things inside of you. If it exists out here, outside of you, it must exist inside of you because life is happening through you, God. <laughs> The student and the the teacher, yeah. I'm learning to tame the ego. Yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey that we all have to go through. Those things are tools to help us to put. Yes, exactly. I am star. High off of life. That's the ultimate high. Life itself should be the high because that's what you came for it to do, to experience yourself on high through the game of life. I got to share you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See, Karuth. Oh, okay. Karuth Sanders. You back again, huh? You're so beautiful inside and out. Natural evolution. Yes, definitely. It's all natural. That's the way this, 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 this journey is taking us back to realizing that we, we, oh God, don't spend too, too much money and too much time. With the crystals and with the sage, with the frankincense and all that. Get to know yourself with them though. But come on, come on. After after you get to know yourself with them, come on, keep going. That's what my higher self told me. It was beckoning for me. Keep going, there's more. No, 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 you're not there yet. There's more. No, don't sit down. Get up. We still walking. There's more. Because there's so much more to you for the unfoldment of you. There's so many portals <laughs> of you. You got the portal of astrology. You got the portal of numerology. You got the portal of uh, quantum physics. You got the portal of consciousness. You got the portal of health and wellness. You got the, there's a whole portal to deal with your nine eat your hair. <laughs> there's a portal to deal with, 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 with your, your immune system. There's just so many portals. Portals of your vision, frequency of hearing, spectrums of light. So many portals within you that don't that don't even take you to down to down the Anunnaki portals. We ain't talk about that. You know, the ancients, the greats, that's a whole nother portal. The blood types. Because you are so much. You are noting, but yet everything. And so you're always be a student trying to experience your nothingness and your everything and every frequency in between that God. I love your hair. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you. I'm so glad I stumbled on this live. Thank you for being here, Star. Everyone or everything becomes so clear. Yeah. Yeah. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Just listen to you, your God saying, oh, thanks, Colby. Thank you, Colby. My son, that's funny. My baby boy like Colby, the player. And when we go out and order something to go, they, he be like, they ask him, which, what's the name for the order? And he be like, Colby. And that's why I smiled when I saw your name. <laughs> Colby. <laughs> I needed this. Yeah. So keep that in mind. If you're an introvert, whether you're an introvert or not, Keep that in mind when you're around people, you picking up on a 13.5 billion years of their Akashic record, subconscious mind, their Lamb Book of Life, because you are in that energetic field. And so, and so, and, and okay, let me, let me share this here with you, what I think, this is just my thought, my perception, you don't have to think like this. For COVID, the whole time, the entire time that COVID exists, I said, is this is something more spiritual than anything. I felt, it was with my knowing that I felt that this is more spiritual than anything. I believe this to have played out like this here. That because we are in the ascension time, the Aquarius age, I personally felt like this dormant DNA of ours had began to ignite 
And even as it was beginning to ignite, others who were on a low frequency was dying out based upon where they were energetically. And the notion about staying so many feet away from each other, you know how they say six feet social distancing. Some people have little bitty weak little, well I won't say weak, little bitty smaller aura, auras or energy fields that's as small as maybe about six feet, right? But then there are others that are conscious beings that have a larger energetic field or aura that extends to probably up to 20 feet, right? And so it was in my mind and it, it felt so heavy, so real to me that in my mind and my heart that there were some people <laughs> that was energetically able to heal others based upon the aura. Because everybody was not catching no the so-called COVID thing. The people that was really catching this here thing were the people that had low immune systems. The people who were probably on low frequency energetically already. And the people who thought because of the fear tactic of watching the news and the scare of the news that actually drew this thing to them because you are creators, whether you're creating through fear or through love. So energetically, you can draw sickness to you by being afraid of catching a thing, right? So it was my belief, <laughs> my knowing that when it was during that time when we had to put the mask on our faces, where it was mandatory or we couldn't go in the certain store, that when I walked in or I walked around and I was like, I was saying to me, nothing that you got on you, lower frequency being that might be near me, can hurt me because I'm too high. But at the same time, since I am so high, I know this to be true. If you come into my energetic field, I'm going to heal you. See, it was two things going on there. Some people think they was catching something from others. They was really just catching themselves. But there were people that we had to cover up just to play the, in this game called life. Like myself, they had to cover up just to go to the store. There were some introverts that was going to the store. There was some conscious beings that was going to the store. And because of the high frequency energetic feel, they were healing other people. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. There's this thing called the law of polarity, polarity where all things got to be two-sided. So if they had people that was getting sick in their thoughts, they thinking that they're getting sick from other people, trust and believe that they had to, in physical form, have people who were getting healed through other people. <laughs> and I was one of them. So I would often say, like, man, look, you know, to the people that was afraid, that I knew that was afraid of catching the COVID, I would respect them in their little aura and their little energy field, and I played a little game and put the little mask on for them. But I would tell them, baby, you ain't got nothing to worry about with me. I'm going to wear this here mask and I'm going to wash my hands. But if you come over here, yeah, you're going to get healed from my energy field. <laughs> any thought, any fear that you once had when you come over here, yeah, how this energy works over here is equivalent to knowing that you just Christ conscious one. Just like in a biblical text, when the lady that had the issue of blood, oh, if I could just touch the hem of his scarf. Just, oh, if I could just get into his energetic field, I know I'll be made whole. I know I'll be made whole. Just like the lady I was talking about earlier who would come in my office and just rub on my shoulder and she just knew, oh, it's something about your energy. I'm like, lady, could you, you stop touching me? I know what you're doing. Could you stop touching me? I'm asking you nicely now. Get your hands off of me. Just like I will go to a beach and the little Caucasian babies, I'm there by myself, just getting the healing microbes that's in the air, just getting kissed by the sun, just getting recharged since I'm a condensed version of the sun, recharged by that energy. And the little Caucasian babies will come over there and want to play with me. You know? <laughs> It's the energy feel. Little children, little babies, they notice this. You ever seen like a mom carrying her baby? <laughs> and the mom probably don't be paying attention. 
But the baby, when they find somebody with an energetic field that, that the baby know is powerful, because the baby's eyes is still just developing. All the baby probably seeing is just energy, orbs of light. So, but when the baby see that person that's conscious, <laughs> the baby can't keep their eyes off of that person. The baby can't the smile. They had a baby on the airplane the other day when I was coming back into the country. The baby kept getting out the seat to come. Put, put her little head on my armrest to smile with her little two little bottom teeth. That's all she had in her mouth. To smile and to look into my eyes because they understand that energetic field. They understand that exchange. They understand that energy. That's why they cry to go when they when, when we're young, we told or taught to go against how we feel. Because your mom and your daddy probably said, go to grandma. But you was afraid of grandma energy field. You didn't want to go to grandma. You didn't want to go to uncle. The same thing happens when we go and get these jobs and we work with all of these so-called people that's on our so-called team. And we got to play this so-called game. <laughs> when you know that your boss have an energy field that is akin to maybe a racist. When you know your boss have an energy field that's akin to maybe being fearful or being chaotic or being untrustworthy. Because you're sitting right next to her in her energetic field. You're close to her every day. So you feel it. But but we taught since we were a baby because mom and daddy made us go and ignore our cry. Then when we were introverts, people told us, no, you're being stuck up. You're being difficult. Why are you acting like that? Why can't you be a team player? And then you wanted to get the raise and you wanted to be part of the team. So in corporate America or your regular job, your blue collar job or whatever, then you went against how you felt for your boss. You shook that hand and you came part of an energetic field that you really wasn't vibing with. And you get home and you're drained and you don't know how to pick up or lift yourself back up. Then the job becomes stressful. But then you begin to play the game so much. You play the game so much that you lose yourself in the game. Because now, after 20 years of playing the game, you don't even know who you are no more. <laughs> and the game being played you. Because you didn't know how to clear the energy. And you become your greatest fear. You become your greatest fear, which was becoming like those people who you were energetically around. You become the next butthole. You become the, the next uh, manager that's on everybody back. And the cycle continues and continues and continues because you didn't know how to clear that energy. You didn't understand that all things was energy, frequency, and vibration. And you went against it. Thing that you're never supposed to go against in this physical reality. You went against the way you feel when how you feel matters. I can say that now when I was an unhealed introvert, people used to always ask me to go against the way I felt. They asked in so many different ways. They'd be like, yeah, could you just do this for me? Come on. So really what they were saying is how I feel matters more than what, how you feel. So I'll need you to do this thing so I can feel better. And then you can feel like crap or you know, whatever you want to feel like. But at least I'll be alleviated because you did what I wanted you to do. <laughs> and so and then when you grow older and you become in tune with yourself a little bit better. Or better yet, when you become conscious, you realize you got to do it the opposite way. And that'd be, that'd be the hardest part to come to, 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 to reprogram or unwash your brain from all of the things that you've been brainwashed against. Wait, wait, you mean how I feel mad enough? Oh, nice don't matter. Oh, being alone with myself now is okay. Oh, I was really feeling that from the people. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't being stuck up. I wasn't being mean. The people really was carrying that. Oh, and I was picking up on that. Oh, and I carried that with me too. Yeah. And so that becomes the hardest part in a spiritual journey when you become conscious. It's like, nah, it can't be that simple. Because I was trying to do that. I was trying to do that when I was a little boy or a little girl. And they told me, the adults told me don't do it like that. Because I was wrong. Man, I thought that how I felt mattered. I knew I wasn't being stuck up. I knew that was something I was reading from outside of me. 
But I didn't understand because I was paying attention to the physical. I didn't understand that the physical was only 0.01%. Then that 99.999% that of energy that I was feeling was real. Dang. Are y'all getting this here? This is really important for you to come and stage in life. Because a conscious journey can make you think for certain moments that you're crazy. Some of your reflections will make you think that you you already gonna feel different because you ain't gonna be doing what everybody else is doing. So you, I don't want you to think you're crazy. You, yeah, misunderstood. All true. Most definitely love this. Yeah, facts. I'm so thankful that you all could understand this here. Don't let nobody outside of yourself stop you from getting to know yourself. Getting to know yourself is getting to know God. If you're still an introvert, you know, and oh, and if, and if I, if I have any introverts, I'm going to tell you when I was on heel introvert, them introverts, they'll say, they'll be up there. They'll be up there with them 103 up there. And they, if you're an introvert like I was, you don't, you don't even put nothing in the comments. You're just watching my body, my body language. You just listen to everything that I'm saying. You just digesting that thing because that's, that's what we do. We, that's, that's, that's what we do. We digest. We read when we're in church. That's what we do. We quiet. We quiet. Sometimes we were, we were a little shy because we probably have a little little trauma mixed up in that quietness. We were a little shy. But I encourage you to come out. I encourage you to open up your heart one day. I encourage you to love again. I encourage you to speak even when that sweat is rolling down your back like it once was for me. When your palms are sweaty, I encourage you because that's part of your becoming stage. I encourage you I ain't saying you have to do it all the time, but I encourage you to try it and then go back up in that chair and then try it again and then go back up in the chair and then keep on trying and come out of those doors. Because this is how, this is why I'm telling you that my fellow introvert, because sometimes in this journey, our blessing, thank you, thank you, Miss Being Soul, our blessing be right behind a thing that we don't want to embrace. And see, for me, I didn't want to embrace talking to people. I didn't want to embrace letting my life shine like this here. So I said I was going to be quiet. But it, when, I, when I healed my trauma, it was almost like a heaviness was on my heart. My passion was on my heart. My purpose. I found it after I healed the trauma. It, it was behind the thing that I didn't want to embrace. Talking and sharing my life with people. It was right there behind that. And so, so when you heal your trauma, you know, like, like, like they'll help people that maybe, I, I, I don't know, they, maybe their son died or whatever. And somebody close to them died and, and they decide, you know, they, they, they just want to stay inside. You know, they don't want to live. And then when I consult with them and stuff, and, they, and I'll tell them, well, look at it from this perspective. Don't you think your son or, or your loved one would want you to experience life and be happy and go outside and talk and, and, and do what you love to do and see and then when they begin to embrace that side of themselves <laughs> getting out more then they find out that they like it and then they, they heal from the, the wounds of, of halting their own growth and then they find their voice again and then when they find their voice again they be outside of the element and there I go Circling back. See, I told you. Look at you. Look at your loved one. Is your angel now shining on you? Encouraging you because your blessing was hid behind the very thing you didn't want to embrace. So if you're an introvert, I, 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 I challenge you to embrace yourself. Embrace yourself. Don't allow your voice or the cells that's around your throat chakra to die without expressing himself. Because it is only your truth that's going to set you free. It doesn't matter what energies you around once you get alignment with your heart and your throat chakra and you have the ability to speak your truth. It is aching to you being able to recharge yourself. It is aching to you giving yourself life again. It don't matter where you start off being an unhealed introvert. It's where you follow through and finish that. Because even now, I still enjoy my lonely moments of life, baby. I enjoy them. Because that's where I met God at. I enjoy 
listening to my inner being speak to me. I enjoy that. But I still can come out here and talk to people. I still can experience the so-called Super Bowls of the world. I still can go dance and I still can go to the mall. I still can function and now I'm in a place in my journey that people tell me, you need to just stop saying that you're an introvert because I don't see no introvertedness about you no more. <laughs> I don't see you 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 needing your lonely moments of life no more. Yeah, but I just still enjoy them because I know how to create peace in here. When you get there, you've arrived. <laughs> amen, amen. Yeah, everybody don't understand or care about your spiritual journey. No, it's not for them to care. Because if you care, they, they care. It, it, it makes the journey not even personal. It's not about them. Mm -hmm. On that road. You're on that road alone. You're on that road alone. But I found in my journey when I was on that road. I put. I put. I, I took a break from people. Energetically. I stood to it. Because I was coming away from religious people. Energetically, I stood to it. Because I was the back sli slider to them, so to speak. So when I stood clear, I cleared my mind of what I thought they may have think thought about me. And I gave them a new thought. Because I began to understand that life was happening to me, not to me. And so when I gave them a new thought, after I stood clear from them, I started giving them a new thought. And I used to say to myself, and still do, they don't understand me, but they admire me so much. And one day soon, they're going to call me. They're going to reach out to me because they're going to miss me so much. And then when it came that day, I would see them and i say, so-and-so loves me. So-and-so -so -and respects me now because they know that I am on this journey and I'm serious about my becoming safe. They know now that the most important thing to me is my soul. So when they see me, they're not laughing at me. They're supporting me in their own way. You see, you got to give your reflections the law that you want them to abide by. By not talking to them, I'm telling you how to create your reality through your habitual thinking. Just like in the biblical text, the Christ conscious one saw people as healed already. So you got to see them as respecting you right now. You got to see them as cheering for you right now in order for that energetic Thing to shift inside of them and then they're going to one day think it's their idea and come to you and be like man you've been telling oh you've been telling me this for years and i and when i when i i smiled just there because somebody in my family just the other day called me and said those words to me because i made the shift here in my mind for them to make first and they thought it was their idea let me tell you what they said because i was so proud of this one this was this here was a debit owner this here was always jumping on my butt about, oh, your ancestors didn't tell you that, da, 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 da. And I would constantly tell this person, you are in the place in your life because you think negative. You have to change you. This person used to tell me for years, look, it's just the way I am. I'm not able to do the thing that you could do. I don't, I'm not going to be like you. Everybody not like you. <laughs> but I, even when this person would tell me these things, I would be looking at that person. I'd be like, she's learning now. She's growing now. She's becoming more conscious now. I can see her happy. I can see her whole. I can see her manifesting. She was the most negative person. She's the most Debbie Downer. And I said, she's a manifester, manifesting. And she was so negative to, I got to a point in my habitual thinking, I would say to her, dang, she's more. She's the most powerful manifester I know. Look at how chaotic she's manifesting the negative. I can't wait till she flipped the switch and begin to manifest the positive that way. So the other day she called me and she was crying. And I was smiling. I was in the parking lot at Whole Foods though. About to get out and go to make groceries. And she's like, man, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I finally get it. And I spent so much time. I actually did a video too on my TikTok. When I was talking about her, I was saying, <laughs> don't waste time. Be, be up on yourself. Is what I said on the TikTok. Don't beat yourself up. 
about that law of time. Just, just you know, once you learn, once you understand the law of assumption, the law of attraction, flip that dial and go, go head on and keep on manifesting. But this time, manifest from a place of love. For the things and get the things that you want, not the things you do not want. See, all of this shift happened through me, because I understand that life works through me. See, this is the type of, type of things that you should do with your reflections. If you're an introverted person, this should come easy to you, because introverted people like myself, we love to play with our right side of the brain. That imaginary side of the brain. See, the extroverts, they, they sometimes have, a, this becomes a stumbling block for them. But the introverts, they could do this really well because we all we do is sit up there and think. All we do is sit up there and think. So we could, we could, we could think about this one, this one that's sick, or we could make them heal. We could think about this one, or the one that's a Debbie Downer. Oh, we could make them a master manifester. We could think about this one here. <laughs> the one that's hateful, and we could make them love us. And it could be fun because we just did it in our head and we ain't had to talk to nobody. All we had to do was be still and know that we got because that's what we like to do as introverts. Use your downtime. Turn that darn TV off. Get a program by other things outside of yourself if you're an introvert. And use that downtime and make believe. Come to Source Energy as a child if you want to make it into the kingdom. That's how you got to do that thing. A child sitting there asking questions. A child knows how to focus and use that, that human imagination for anything that they want. And so that same person, God darn it, I just thought about this here. That same person that I just told you, called me today. Called me today. I was on my way to the post office to ship those orders that I had for the weekend. And I was like, I'm trying to get out of here before four o'clock. What's up? And she was like, you got a minute to talk. I wanted to learn a little bit more about this law of assumption thing, this law of attraction thing. If I'm doing this here part right, I need to know that when I'm not um, doing my assumptions, when I'm drifting to sleep, like in my every day, what I'm supposed to be thinking about then. And I said, oh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you who you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be pretending as if you are that person that you was imagining while you was drifting off to sleep. Because I teach her how to, how to use her mind when she's in a theta state of being, where the subconscious mind is open so she can penetrate it, right? And so while I was packing the orders, I was like, I'm going to share with you what I'm thinking. Right before me, I have 17 orders. I'm up in here and I'm packing them and I'm, and I'm packing them, but I'm thinking... These 17 orders are the ones I wanted to do. I'm in my warehouse, but I wanted to do these 17, but my crew is back there. And they're boxing out the other thousands of orders. I said, I, I need you to focus on your, your passion or your purpose or whatever it is that you're manifesting. As if you're doing it, you're happy about doing it, but it's on a bigger grand scheme of things. And because you trick your subconscious mind like this here, all you're doing is creating more orders. I don't, I don't do ads, y'all. I just create with my mind. I just draw people to my site with my mind. Mindfulness will be the doing in the time. This is why I was telling you all about the crystals and everything. Don't get caught up on that too, too, too much. Because your mindfulness will do it every time because it is to my knowing that you got. And what did God do? The source that we all stem from, the energy we all stem from in the recreation of this reality created through thought. In the beginning was the word and the word was the expression of thought and source energy said, let, be, let there be through thought. And then source energy said, and it was good. It was just an expression of thought. Thought go always trump. Once you start using the herb and increase your frequency, using the crystals, it's almost like you just this little child on a bike with training wheels. And you know how we get them little bikes with training wheels? We'll be riding, we, we, we'll be getting it, and the training wheels in the back of the bike be up. They don't even be touching the ground no more. <laughs> And we still riding and our parents just smiling and just smiling at us. And we smile and we think it's the training wheels got us. But then we look back and we realize, oh my God, I'm doing it. Yeah, you're doing it. And you can always do it by yourself. Because you have everything you need within.
to do everything you need out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I found being down on yourself is aching to try to achieve a full sense of holiness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't be down on yourself. You're lagging. I'm still lagging. Can you hear me now? Grant? Can you hear me now? Inside. Going to have to borrow that. We are the greatest crystal. Yes, we are. That you'll ever own. That you'll ever own. I don't care what kind of crystal. I have them all. But I'm the greatest one. And believe that. Put that inside of your subconscious mind. And believe. No, 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 no. I got to catch that. Know that. Don't believe that. Know that. Know that you are the greatest crystal that you will ever own. Ever. Ain't no crystal. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know how we've been reading about the crystals? We was just talking about how our energy feels lap and our Akashic records and their records or subconscious mind, or whatever you call it in your journey, lap of the 13.5 billion years of information of the exchange because we 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 close to that person and we reading them. Well guess what? If you read about them crystals, they'll tell you, oh, this this Shungite was, you know, three billion years old. No, 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 baby. How about you greater than that? You 13.5 billion years old. You know, they'll, they'll tell you about these certain crystals that, you know, it was a spaceship and this and that happened and it crashed and crumbled and this is the remain and this crystal that was remained can help you draw people to you and draw money to you and clear energy. Wait, hold up. I'm the darkness that was on the face of the deep. I, I was here 13.5 billion years ago. I mean, put, you know, how they, they tell you to, when you try to order something, you can compare, compare yourself to your crystal. You win all the time. <laughs> you got gold inside of you. You got crystals fluid, fluid inside of you. Matter of fact, your soft spot in your head was your crystals fluid waiting for the day that you become the Christ conscious one and know the type of tool that you came equipped with. <laughs> you have this flowing inside of you when you're going to allow it to flow. I'm talking about the land that's flowing with milk and honey. <laughs> you will always be greater than anything that you see in this physical reality because life happens through you, not to you. But you got to get to know yourself and know what you equip with inside of here. If you don't know what you equip with inside of here, then you're going to always look, be looking outside there for you. <laughs> You will always be looking for you. You will always think maybe that you're not complete or whole just with you. But I promise you from the research, from the knowing that I have, it is my knowing that tells me this here. It is my knowing that has me on these lives speaking life inside of you. It's my ability to recharge myself. And since I know how that I'm hooked up to a constant recharge, that I don't never lose my juice, that I can always come here and give you some of mine. <laughs> because energy is not created nor destroyed, it's simply transformed. So I, even though we are not 20 feet, come on now, close to one another, I still understand that my voice is a frequency too, because all things are frequencies. My look as I look at you on this phone is a frequency too. My aura, my light code that is coming through your phone right now is a frequency too. So I know you're getting some of my goodness. This is why I come forward. And some people will be like, oh, I love the way you talk. Oh, you look like so and so. Oh, da 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 da. No, nothing. It's the older energy. Oh, the frequency. But we just don't speak that language. Oh, I feel the frequency. Oh, it's something about you. Oh, you kind of cute. Oh, I like your hair. Oh, no, no, no. What? The frequency? What? You like non-ether is what you're telling me? The frequency? You like the uh, my ability to defy gravity? The frequency? That's what you like. Because <laughs> I ain't even the body. I ain't no little black lady. You ain't no black person, white person, whatever you are. We are not the body. Like I said, that's the 0.01%. The 99.999% that you feel is my energy exchange. Understand that. 
when you meet people, you feel in the energy. It ain't they abs, it ain't they BBL, no, 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 because they, <laughs> it's the energy. The energy walks into the room first. 20 feet before they get into the room, the energy said, hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, your, your ether is nice and you look good, the 3D on point. <laughs> That's funny. Understand, I am so, yes. It's the energy. Yeah, that's it. Hey, grateful. Hey, Erica. That's right. It's the energy. Remember that. And when you remember that, use that as a tool in your journey, especially if you're in, if you're an introverted person. Use that as a tool. Use that as a tool. Understand your tool. It's a tool of discernment. This is a tool of knowing. And so when, when, whenever, when, if you could, if you were introverted, you don't talk that much already. This is how you could tune in on your skills of discernment. Yeah, you might be shy, a little shy introverted, and probably don't look people in the eye too long. But make make a little glimpse, take a little glimpse at them, and feel, feel what you experience, what you feel when you see them. Listen to the thought of what 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 comes to mind when you see them. Not your trauma thought. I'm talking to the healed version of you when you heal from your trauma. Because if you ain't healed from your trauma, let's say, for example, you uh, had your daddy was a narc or whatever. If you ain't healed from your trauma, when you look at everybody, they're going to be like, oh, that's a narc too. Look, look at him. His eyeball look a little narcish. You know, like, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when you heal from your trauma and you know how to be still and know that you're God and you know how you feel your peaceful aura that you have. Because you've done the work. Feel how peaceful your aura feels to you while you alone in that room. And then when you come out of that room, go walk outside. And just whoever come, the meal man, DPS man or whoever, come feel the energy of that person. Or go somewhere, go to a store, go to a mall. Go. I used to like to go to the food court in the mall. And I just like to look and watch. And that... That fine tuned my ability to read. Just watching people, people watching. Yeah. Or or you don't want to go nowhere because you're still an introvert and you don't want to be around the people. Turn the TV on. It's another one that I used to do. Turn the TV on. Don't try to read, no lips. Just turn the volume off. Mute it. Don't read no lips. Turn the volume off. And just watch what's going on on the TV. Watch who's sad, who's happy. You you could read the story without reading the lips and without hearing the volume. When you fine tune your energy, you know everything that's going on. Because you're looking at it. You're looking at it. And you 13.5 billion years old. Of course, you know what the program going to be about. If you could fine tune your energy. Learn that. That's so important. Learn that. Learn how to read your reflections. Learn it. This is why the Christ conscious one in the biblical text had the parable told about the lady who was sleeping with, she, he met her at the well and she was getting water and so many words to see parable went. And he knew, hey, you, you know what? The man you're sleeping with ain't even yours at the house. How did the Christ conscious one, it was teaching you your ability <laughs> to read your superpowers. How did the Christ conscious one know that lady was sleeping with somebody else's man? Huh? <laughs> and the man wasn't at the well. That's your superpowers. So when you're conscious and you, you're talking about you didn't see it coming. What? How you didn't see it coming? You're supposed to be the oracle. How they give you your kingdom and you, and, and you ain't see him coming? <laughs> Hang around me a little long. I'll make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Yes, you didn't look. You didn't look. Clear the deja vu. Yeah, how you of all people get bamboozled and you conscious, you're supposed to be able to see. That's your birthright. That's all of our birthright. All of us can do this. But the difference is some of us spend time with ourselves 
fine tuning this. And some of us are kind of out of sync with it and don't want to be still with ourselves. But everybody has the innate ability to tap into source energy whenever they get ready. Some people ain't ready for themselves and let them people be. But if you're ready for yourself, these are some tools that you can use on yourself to edify the church. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at Sam up in here. Hey, Sam. The beauty salon. Miss LaQuette. Hey, Jimmy. So in your lonely moments of life, do this. And understand that you are the energy manipulating that other energy out there. But in order for you to manipulate it, you got to read it and know what it is that you're manipulating first. If your eye be single, your whole body should be full of light. Your whole body. Is your eye single yet? Because your eye need to be single to do this. And most introverts have the ability to use that single eye real easy. Yeah. Because they're using a different part of their brain, just being an introvert. <laughs> I know. I know. Anyway, that's the video. That's what I wanted to share with you all. Y'all have any questions before I get up out of here? Any questions before I wrap this up? I want you to know yourself. Because to know yourself is to know God. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, Rover. To know yourself is to know God. Practice knowing yourself. Practice these tools. Get you the crystal if that's what you need to do. Get you the Tibetan bowl. Listen to the 432 healing frequency if that's what you need to do. You're welcome, Ashley. Whatever I play it out in my mind first. Yep, there you go. Play it out. Whatever imagination, imaginary scene you need to play out that you want implemented in your journey, play that thing out. Loop it. So happy I found you. I'm so happy you did too, JBB. Yeah, so happy I found you. Oh, you too, happy. Nicole. Okay, any books you would recommend to start the knowing journey? I would recommend The Four Agreements. That's a really good book because it teaches you how to be mindful of even your words and using your word impeccably. I would say another good book would be um, Alchemy 101, teaching you how to transform energy. I would see. Let's see, um, Joe Dispanza, Breaking the Habit of Being You. Yeah, that teaches you about mindfulness. Yeah, 432 um, Healing Frequency. That's that's available on YouTube. You can listen to those. You can attune your um, ears to that. And what happens is it, it attunes your body to it. I would also recommend uh, Abraham Hicks. She's available on YouTube. She teaches the law of attraction, but um, she has books. She, I have a lot of her books, um, The Secret and um, Law of Attraction. I'm, I'm recommending that because it kind of gets your mind focused on joy. And I could hear her song saying, joy, 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 joy is the key. I used to listen to her years ago. Um, what other books? I haven't read a lot of deep spiritual books. I actually, if you want to know a lot, uh, some other ones that I would recommend, I would actually recommend Conjuring up, um, Conjuring Spirits for Witches. It might not sound like a nice, nice book, but I tell you one thing, you learn about the other side of yourself, God, the totality of God is called Spiritual Conjuring for Witches. And it taught me how to use dark energy in a rightful way not to bring harm to anybody because if you were here for that story that i said earlier i spoke of a story of how i pushed somebody out of my physical reality and i never had to see them no more well i learned that when i learned about spiritual conjuring for witches because you know in religion you talk you talk about the light love and light you know i'm blessed and highly favored when i came out of religion i wanted to know the other side get to know the other side of yourself too Learn about your darkness too. And when you do learn about your darkness, you, you have an advantage because then you really can learn how to manipulate energy. Because see, I learned some of these things by knowing, okay, when I learn energy, for example, I know that if I could weaken 
just like they do with football and all. If I could weaken my opponent, I have an energetic advantage, right? So if I have an energetic advantage, if my energetic advantage is I weaken them because I ignore them and I came from a place of love, then I could destroy them because love, love heals always the highest frequency. So you could use even the darkness to get you to the other side of the light that you want to experience. So outside of that, um, spiritual conjuring, I haven't read this of the Dead Sea Scrolls, all the religious books, the Bible, the, um, the uh, understanding and reading the um, hieroglyphics, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, things like that for spirituality because I wanted to get to know myself first, you know, and to know religion. Um, and that's all I can think of right now. That's a good start for you, though. That's a good start. That's going to take you down some portals right here. But yeah, all of my books that I've read was really about spirituality, about the ancestors per se, about Abraham Hicks, quantum physics, uh, Joe Dispenza. That's all that comes to my mind in my journey. And outside, and outside of that too, just like I talked about the crystals, outside of that, remember this here, it's going to come a point where you're going to push them books to the side too. Because you can't, I, I tell people sometimes, you know, hey, you can't talk and listen at the same time. So you can't constantly be learning and learning without implementing. There's going to be a time where you got to push the books down and, and, and digest or rewrite or reprogram yourself based upon how you want it to be. And then go and see how that thing works. And then see if it's working for your good. And if you got to tweak it, get back up in the book for a little bit and then go again. You know, get back in the book again and then go. Because you want you you want to set a good foundation for yourself, you know, set a good foundation. But then you gotta go. <laughs> Don't forget to go. You know, we ain't gonna just be reading all this lifetime. Go to now. So yeah, practicing what you learn. Yeah, reading the Bible now and meditating. That's a beautiful start. And then you could even read about meditation and the different practices of meditation. Oh wait, I cannot. Oh wait, I cannot forget to mention um. On YouTube, there's a book and on YouTube, Florence Shin, The Game of Life. Oh, on YouTube, it's free. You got to do that one. You do, oh, you got to do that one. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Shin, S-H-I-N-N. -N. Love it. Love it. And um, on YouTube, or you could buy the books, but um, Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard, he teaches mindfulness too on a, on, a, on a good level of law of assumption. So that's another one too. I, re, I have a lot of his books. Neville Goddard, Florence Shin, Abraham Hicks, Joe Dispenza, things like that. That, that, that you, you good for the next two, three years. <laughs> of reading right there. Yes, you know about that one. I... Theo, yeah, that book is so beautiful. Yeah, Florence Shin. Y'all know about that, huh? Manifestations of knowledge, yeah. Yeah, no point in reading if you're not implementing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Black practice what you really learn. Read the Bible, yeah. Mm -hmm. I watch Abraham Hicks on YouTube and I'm reading her book now. Yeah, she is good. Yeah, thank you. You are so welcome. Did I miss something? I tried to go back up. Let me see, Never Got It is good. Oh, you know Never Got It too, God is yeah, Tia, yeah, okay, I didn't miss anything. If I missed something while I wasn't looking, you want to type it again and I could answer? Hey, Key, hey, Key, anything else? Any other questions? I'm going to give y'all a couple of seconds if you type in before I get about a year. I caught everybody question. I'm surprised nobody didn't ask me nothing about no healthy wellness, because somebody always get off a topic and be like, yeah, but I want to do da-da-da-da. The best is calling on your ancestors and spiritual team. Have a great evening. Yeah. Um, the best is calling on your ancestors and spiritual team. For those who have conjured up energy, it is the best. Yeah. Like say, for instance, oh, I love my grandma. And me and my grandma was really, really, really tight. Like, right? And me and my grandma, you know, my grandma would have saw me do whatever. Yeah, it is the best. But some people don't have grandmas like that. I'm... Love all of my authors. Oh, okay. You are so welcome. The Kiki experience. Okay, yeah. I sit in my head and wonder if I'm procrastinating. 
get up out of that head and know that you're no longer procrastinating. You just stopped it just right now. And now what are you going to do? What new thought you're going to give yourself, Joseph? Now that you know that you used to be a procrastinator and you just broke that generational curse. So now you're not going to procrastinate anymore. Now you're doing the work right now. You you set the tone. You change your mind. And that's just, as cool. that's just as easy as this thing is. You just, oh, I was thinking negative. Oh, not no more. I'm thinking positive now. That's how this journey is. You fall down off of that bike that I was talking about earlier with the training wheels. You get back up. And keep on pedaling. That's what them little children. That's why you got to come as a child. That's what them little children do. Even if they cry. No, I got a bobo. Okay, let me kiss it. Let me put a bandaid on it. And what the child going to do? Get back out there. And they're going to want to do it again. They're going to want to play again. So get back out there and play. But back to the ancestors. That's another part of my, in my journey that I went to too. But I didn't have, like, for example, that grandma who... My grandma, I'm just being honest. In the physical reality, my, my grandma... Bless her soul, but she was messy. She caused a lot of chaos. So for me, that will probably would not be the particular ancestor I would call on because the reason why I didn't during my journey was because in my subconscious mind, grandma was messy. Grandma, what? No, grandma was messy. So now, if I if I was the person that was into spirituality and doing um work on my altar, which I went through that phase too, if I was doing work on my altar. My grandma wasn't on my altar. No. You know who was on my altar? The goddess of June. <laughs> the goddess of love. The goddess of beauty. The goddess of feminine energy. The goddess of June. And so she was not my immediate in my family ancestor. But I reverence that energy because I looked up on that energy as being feminine, loving, nurturing, beautiful, you know. Instead of my grandma. Now there were other people in my family that I would have at my altar. But you want to pick. You don't want to be fighting against the current is all I'm saying here. That's a beautiful point you mentioned. You don't want to be fighting against the current. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't have called my grandma. I just didn't. Because if I would have called my grandma first, I would have had to heal my or rewrite my story in my subconscious mind. And believe that my grandma was on the other side doing work. That was finally for my good since she was tapped into infinite intelligence and now she really want the family to be together and now she's spiritual and now she can help me and now da da da, da. I had to do all that, all that conjuring up energy to believe all that. And I was like, no, I, I'm going to just leave, let them on rest in peace and I'm going to just go ahead on and call Goddess of June. But you're right. You have power in the ones that you really believe while they were here looked out for the greater good for you. You have a lot of power. The one that you will probably want to jump in that grave with, heck yeah. The one that left you something, heck yeah. That's power in that. That's love in that. Because in your physical reality, that person really did support you and looked out for you. And so when they passed on, if you feel in your heart that they're like an angel guiding for you, guiding you and giving you good advice and speaking to you. But see, I'm just being honest. I don't. I never felt like that when my grandma passed. Like she was, you know, looking out for me even in the spiritual realm. I just didn't feel, feel like that. But for the people that, like I talked to y'all about my guru when he passed, he in my ear every day. Now for somebody like that, yeah, I could, I could telepathically communicate and I know that on the other side, in the non-physical that my thoughts when I'm making my products, because he was a herbalist, he was a mindfulness. We will still astro travel and stuff and protect, project and manifest, meditate and do all of that together. Sell products and all of that together at a whole food store. Not him. Oh yeah, I would invite him to my altar. But what I'm saying here, be mindful how your subconscious mind is working toward the people that the past that you got on that altar. And make sure you are already conjured up the energy for them people to be working for you and helping you on your journey. If not, you kind of like setting yourself back. Because all this is energy, frequency, and vibration. So now you got to believe something, conjure up energy for, for grandma. And, and grandma cause confusion in, in the family. Go to the one that you already know or the already like. Already kind of like you want to pick the ancestor or the, the deity or whatever that you aspire to be like. 
And so for me, that was my guru. For me, that was a goddess of shun because I wanted to learn about my femininity, my love, you know, my divinity, my grace, being nurturing and loving and caring to other and in attune my gift to that. I wanted to learn about the waters. I wanted to learn about, about opening up my heart and love. So, so pick, pick, pick whoever you, you giving that energy to. <laughs> yeah, what is your suggestion for healing the root chakra? Um, healing the root chakra, forgiving, loving anyway, whoever hurt you, root chakra is going to be connected to, um, some kind of trauma with the parents, most likely, you know, because it's about survival. That's when you have maybe abandonment issues, trusting. So I would suggest that you forgive them mentally. You don't have to do this in the physical reality. You forgive them mentally through your mind, through your habitual thinking and stop thinking about the abandonment act per se. And then when you forgive them energetically, you now have to tell that little girl inside of you that you gotta protect her. That I love you, you have me now. You, you pretend like you're holding her on your lap, in your arms. You have me now. And you did the best you can. Then you pretend like you're talking to her. And she's you're allowing her to hear what that person who abandoned you or left you or you know hurt you that got you in the root chakra with survival mode issues. You talk to her as if you're allowing her to hear that person tell her that they're sorry. Let her hear your mother say, sorry let her hear your father say sorry let her hear them say that they love you and that you didn't deserve that but ultimately you gotta also let her hear you say that to her because she's looking for a savior and they are actually not it you are so you gotta let go of what you think they owed you by pretending that they're giving it to her and you circle back and give it to her to reassure her that she got you. Because through life, for eons and eons, you were supposed to be in tune with her. Because she is you. She's been waiting on you to come to get her out of the closet. While she was afraid. While she had survival issues. She's been waiting on you. So you got to take that, that role and let her know that, look, I've learned some things. And now I got you in a position where I'm not going to let nobody leave you and hurt you. We're best friends forever. I'm going to pay attention to how you feel. I'm going to make sure that you're protected. I'm going to make sure that you feel loved. Come here and uh, let me hold you in my arms. Know that I got you. I ain't let nothing else happen to you no more. And this is why. And I'm sorry. And you're beautiful. And you're worthy. And you did the best you can. You speak life into her as if you're literally talking to a little girl who has survival issues. Because this little girl has survival issues. And she lives within you. And you got to make sure that she, you feel this release of tears. Maybe this release from your heart that she's okay. And she feels like she can come out of that closet and, and maybe soften herself. Maybe play with her toys again. She, You got to be able to alleviate her stress this is a mental thing i'm talking about but you gotta make sure in other words this this probably happened after you shed some tears is what i'm saying you gotta go into those dark places with her to rest let her rest assured that she feels protected because if you don't go save her <laughs> your relationships and your physical reality are gonna suffer because she ain't gonna let you Live your so-called happily ever after while part of you is suffering. She's like, uh-uh. She's going she to always catch a temper tantrum. She's going to always, the cycle going to keep on living within you where she's catching a temper tantrum in you and you catching a temper tantrum around the people, you know, in your relationships. She don't feel like she's safe, so now you don't feel like you're safe with these people in these relationships. So she going she gonna to make them even unsafe. For you to be around. She going to show you her everywhere. Because life happens through you. And she's part of you. Inside of you. 
on my YouTube channel. I have the video. If you go to my link, is in my bio up here. If you click on my picture, you go to the black triangle on my YouTube channel. That'll bring you to my YouTube. Then you go to videos. And then you scroll down for a good little ways. You're going to see a picture of a little boy and a little girl. That's going to be the thumbnail on that YouTube channel. And it's a video on how to heal a little girl and a little boy inside of you. And use that video in your quiet moment in life. And pretend that this little girl is coming in your room and that you want to tell her these things. It's a tune to 432 hertz of healing frequency behind it. And it coaches with my voice. You telling her these choice words. So it's going to get you in healing frequency. It's going to help heal your root chakra is what I'm saying. That'll be a good start for you. Mm, journaling helping me. Yep. Journaling helps to get it out. Dur journaling does help to get it out. Yeah. Just subscribe. Hey, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Big Zach. How you doing? Thank you for passing through, babe. Yeah. Growth is on another level. Thank you for this wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Did I miss something up in here while I was talking up to about that? I have um heard that pain so deep I don't know where to find it. Oh no, it's in there. You ain't buried that deep. Your physical reality gonna show you where that you ain't buried that deep because your physical reality gonna show you you what's in you. So you you gonna find it. Listen to that <laughs> listen to that same video, you'll find it. Oh my goodness, you are hitting on some things I'm still working on. This has been my self love sees. Oh, good. Good. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. How do I heal my throat chakra? Open up your heart. What's your suggestion for healing the root chakra? Oh, okay. I got that one. I was making sure I didn't miss nothing. Open up your heart. The throat chakra, that's the same one that I had out of balance. And it was because I had closed off my heart. So when you have this heart um, closed, it starts to pulsate to the other chakras, whether high or low. So I closed off my heart. And so I was saying, I'm not going to talk to nobody because I, you know, I had a little girl, the little daddy issues and stuff like, right? So in an effort to open up my throat chakra, I had to start loving, you know, open up my heart. And it started when I forgave my daddy in the physical reality and just told him, you know, look, I love you simply because you were my father. It was like the barbed wire fence came from around my heart and I was able to love again. And I practiced loving again. I practiced it in my physical reality, finding things that made me feel like I was in love with it. It didn't necessarily have to be a person or partner. It could be the hummingbirds that I really, really love. It could be babies. It could be, you know, the color red. It can be the sun shining on a beautiful, clear day. It could be love, loving to dance. Find something or someone and use it as your object of attention to love. And then talk to it. You know, tell it how much you love it. And so... I will talk to these things. I will talk to the sun ra. I will talk to the hummingbirds and like, oh, you're so pretty. Look how pretty you are. You're so beautiful. Oh, and you look like you could be the perfect little gentleman. Oh, look at your little bitty wings. Things like that there. Or talking to the sun, like talking to the flowers. Oh, you smell so good. I love how you smell. I love how beautiful you are. And talking to the men or the women in your life, when people ask you what you're doing, use your feminine energy and tell them how you're feeling. Oh, I feel so comfortable. Men talk about doing, because that's masculine, doing. You need to talk from the abundance of the heart so your mouth can speak expressions of love to unblock the chakra pool of energy. So when a man or somebody tells ask you what you're doing, Use a moment in your life with the person that a man that you like or opposite sex that you like and say how you feeling and say so if a guy was to ask me right now in this particular time and space what am I what are you doing I would say oh I feel so comfortable sitting here my dinner tastes so delicious after I had my dinner I just hit the live button because it felt so easy to talk to people since I'm so passionate about sharing my journey with them. And since I know that they are my reflection, I just sat there on the bar stool in the most comfortable position, hydrated with my favorite juices and water right in front of me. And it just flowed so effortlessly. I love my passion. I love my purpose. You see where I'm going here? I'm talking about how I feel. I'm opening up my heart because the heart is about feeling. I'm talking about how I feel. Feel. From the abundance of my heart, my mouth speaks. So I'm unclogging my throat chakra spiritually. Spiritually, I am. 
And I had to do that because if I had not have addressed my throat chakra in the spiritual realm, I would have never healed my thyroid issue that I once had in my physical reality. Because in my spiritual realm, I created thyroid issues because all sickness and disease start in the spiritual realm first by clogging up a chakra pool of energy and then they manifest in the physical as dis-ease and disharmony. That's what all sickness and disease is all about. So this is what you got to start doing. Speaking. Speaking your truth from your heart. Yeah. I love you. Hey, Pira. I love you too, babe. I talk to my house plants. That's a beautiful thing. Because plants are conscious. Yeah. Plants are conscious. That part. Yep. Keep on talking. That's how you open it up. And then you're going to be... You're going to be... Look at me. Now, I was... I don't know how long I've been on this live. I've been <laughs> but I do know when I got on <laughs> I do know, I do know what I got on here. They had some sun outside. I know they had some sun outside right there. It's dark out there. So I know I've been on this line for a long time, running my mouth. <laughs> you have such a sweet soul. Thank you, thank you. You being flow. Yeah, I do. <laughs> the other day I sit on the line for four hours. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this is not normal for an introvert to be talking this much. But yeah, I do get employed because this is my passion, you know? This is my passion. But yeah, that's what you do. You open up that heart, baby. You open up that heart. Let it come on out. I'm cooking and listening. Yeah. Where are you from? Hey, Teak Nails. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm in Arizona right now, though. I manifested early retirement in a house out here. And so. I'm from NOLA, baby. <laughs> That's my hometown. So anything else? Anything else y'all got? Anything? Big boy? Big bow? <laughs> That's a funny name. Okay. Well, I'm about to get up over this live. And when I'm inspired to on tomorrow, I hit the button again. This video was from my heart to yours. I'm going to NOLA tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. For Mardi Gras? It's Mardi Gras time. When is your next fast? Oh, I don't know. Um, I just came off a fast on the 29th, so I don't know. I'm going to have to play in one where I'm in NOLA. Oh, really? I'm going to use your hairdo. Yeah, do that. Do that. You're so welcome. Any recommendations? Um, uh, I enjoy you once again. Oh, thank you, Grateful. For New Orleans? Um, uh, if you eat regular food, uh, Dracos, I'm a vegan. All the little vegan spots I used to go to been closed down in New Orleans. But Dracos seafood is really good. Downtown New Orleans, you can't go wrong any with any food in New Orleans. The flavor is unmatched. Um, old king cakes, king cakes are a hot thing right now in New Orleans. Um, Antoine's king cake is the best king cake. Uh, Dracos, they really good uh, for the seafood. Um, if you drink liquor, the, the hurricane downtown bourbon street, um, that's a popular thing, but the, like around the French market, St. Charles street. Oh, they got a store called, if you, you're on this channel, you got to know about consciousness. They got a store off of uh, camp street called earth odyssey. They got the amethyst over there. They got the clear quartz. It's really inexpensive. It's a beautiful store. They do mindfulness over there. And um, and they sell all kind of beautiful, powerful crystals and stuff. I love it. And that's about it. I don't I don't really mess with New Orleans food and stuff no more. So I, I can't tell you too many of those no more. New Orleans people, they, they have good food, but they eat all kinds of different things. And I was kind of like the vegan in New Orleans. So it seemed like I was the only one. <laughs> But have a good time, though, for Mardi Gras. You're going to catch Mardi Gras, and I'm going to miss it. This is going to be my first Mardi Gras miss. Not that I went to the parade, but being in the atmosphere of having the parades and sticking in the, um, being in the traffic. Because I stopped going to parades when I was young. I'm going with my brother. So pretty. Chill vibes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a question. What it means when you're meditating with a crystal and it breaks? It breaks? Wait. Where the rest of that question at? And it breaks. Is that right? Is it breaks? 
say that question again? Um, big, big Bo? Send me, tell me the rest of that. It breaks. It broke while you was, oh, it broke in half while you was meditating with it. Hmm. Hmm. That never happened to me before. What you was doing, you was putting pressure on it. You had it on, on one of your chakra pools of energy and it just broke in half. Never experienced that. New Orleans food and spirit. Zia's restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. New Orleans food and spirits. Yeah. Those are good. And Zia's. Zia's have this little, um, the grits and corn or whatever. Yeah. New Orleans food and spirits. They got those, um, voodoo rolls. I used to eat them years ago. Yeah. How much you know about that, Tia Gia? <laughs> Let's see, I had, I had it above my head. Oh, now that, having it above your head, hmm, energetically, that sounds like the crown chakra being open. You know, decalcifying the pineal gland. My son used to do that, actually. He used to put his crystals on his head. None of them broke on him. But if he was in an intense meditation practice at that time, that sounds like the um, your crown chakra breaking or decalcifying which could cause that in the physical reality as within so without could cause in the physical reality it to break as well yeah salam princess hey king oh okay i'm going with my mother so pretty chill vibes okay good you be safe out there i became a vegan a month ago and i feel the best i've ever felt i know you do i'm also a vegan oh okay where can i get more information about spirit spirit and thyroid Mm. I never researched that. I never researched any spiritual things as far as the thyroid is concerned. I had a guru at that time, and he sensed that my heart chakra wasn't um, open at the time, and he read me for for that. You know, if you if you're around any spiritual beings that have the ability to read, they can help you in that particular area. I do consultations if you need help in that area too, but in that part, mm, most often you can't find that part from a book you know not not a book you got to get that from somebody that's gifted in that area thank you you love my accent thank you thank you for sharing this knowledge you are so welcome okay let me get back to this bottom did i miss anything how to get so much out of my masculine energy i'm a male also i'm left-handed oh you're left-handed so you're using the right side of your brain so how to get so how to get so much out my masculine energy I don't know. I'm a, I don't understand how you've worded that. I'm thinking that you're saying how to get more out of your masculine energy, but to the to the extent that you're saying that you want to use more of your masculine energy, is that what you're saying? Please clarify that because it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter which one you're using, whether you're using masculine or using feminine. You got to balance them. It's the difference between men. They they have these men that are just in out of balance conscious or not so when you become conscious you are conscious of all you are conscious that you're all all of you is god so regardless of you acting masculine in the physical reality this is what men get hung up on this become a stumbling block for them they want to act so hard and in charge and rrr, but men have both masculine and feminine in them they're not complete until they you're not complete until you make the union whether it's the union of the bride and the groom from religion, the union of the right or left brain hemisphere, the union of the yin and the yang, the union of masculine and feminine principle. Because the law of polarity says there must be two sides. So if you are all macho, bra, masculine, you got to learn how to speak from your heart too. You got to learn that soft side. And, it, and it, so if you are more soft and you know speaking your truth and expressing your feelings you got to learn that physical you know stand up side of you too that protector side of you so whichever side that you're saying that you're on on this question that i'm you know trying to figure out go to the other side fine tune the other side that's how you meet god that's how you become whole when you make the union within yourself that's when you become whole and complete yeah yeah okay i moved to yeah oh you're from new orleans okay you moved to texas 12 years ago oh okay i see that's how you know dear that's beautiful that's what i was thinking you just needed more insight okay good okay yes i will go to your site and get your information good 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 because my left side of my body just feels more stronger for some reason than the other 
Oh, I see. The left side of your body. That's interesting. I had a hand on the left side of my body doing my conscious journey that would feel warmer than the other. But that was right before my Kundalini energy experience. Yeah. So I, I, I believe that that's something energetically that's happening based upon where you are consciously in your journey more than it is a masculine, um, feminine principle inside of you. It's more than the physical, it's the energetic thing. Yes, finding balance. Yeah, you got to find balance. Those men, they, they think that they, you know, they're doing something on one side, but you're just, you're just displaying one side of self. God is all. God is male and female. You know, and they may, they may think that that's going to be like, a, I don't know, simp or whatever. But until that man, see, okay, in lamest term, a man don't really become a real man, a.k.a. what we call a gentleman, until he embraces. this. You know, in his younger years, he is masculine. He's hitting and quitting it. He is running through other women. You know, he's raw. He ain't in tune with no feelings or nothing. But let that man settle down in his life and maybe have a daughter. You know, he should starts to show the little softer side of himself. Or maybe get a little older and his little wiener stops working and he turns into a grump hole, whatever, like, right? That's just that's testosterone level declines. Now all of a sudden he's more patient. Now he's reading that newspaper, he's crossing that leg. Now he's not so raw. And he's like grump hole. He's like grump hole. He's like, let her play, let her have it. Come here, come sit on grump hole lap. Now he's more calmer. It took him going through that different state of being. And you don't have to wait till your little wiener ain't working no more to become a gentleman. Gentlemen, or when you done ran through so many women just to become a gentleman, all you got to do is understand that, hey, I have masculine feminine, I mean, principles in here and I have feminine principles. That's what makes me whole. I just need to know when to use them. Same thing goes for women. I need to know when to use which one. Because what it need to come out at a certain point in time. Because just like with a woman, a female, she'll think, "Oh, I gotta be feminine. I gotta be dainty. If my nails ain't done, then I'm not being feminine. If I don't have lipstick on and I'm not fully made up, no, 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 they can't see me because I should be kept and divine all of the time." But I, women have masculine principles. Masculine principles are necessary for women too because let's say the the male has to go away to travel or or you know be away from the house. She gotta know how to protect when he ain't there. Or maybe she gets herself in a situation in her life where she doesn't have a partner. She still needs to know how to protect herself. You see? She so she needs to know both sides. And so does the man. That's what makes you whole. That's what makes you God. When you embody the totality of God. Okay. You made a statement regarding the disease starts in the spiritual realm first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. So, um, so that was like a, um, let me see where, where, um, maybe, maybe you could find something. If you research on maybe Google, whatever, for a book like that, though, because I didn't read a book about that. I just, it's, you know, some things in your journey, you get the knowing of in your journey. I didn't read a book about that. I just know that because I'm an introvert and I've watched energy and I know and can comprehend energy. But I didn't read a book to understand that. I love is understanding, so I, I got to know myself. Knowing yourself help you figure that thing out. Knowing yourself and, you know, coming up in church and all and reading the energies of the older people that was in church that loved God so much. I watched them as a little girl. You know, I was in church really heavily in religion. I watched them as a little girl that they loved God so much, but yet they hurt so bad. And so I was, you know, the pastor's assistant, the usher, you know, the camera girl in the choir. And I did all of these different things, the treasurer. And so I was around the members of the church. And I've always been an introvert, always been a reader. So these members of this church, they all, you know, grew on me and around me and I was friends with their daughters you know and so I would go sleep over to them to their daughter's house or whatever but I would still be watching those parents 
you know, because those parents were like on a pool pit. Those parents were evangelists and, and apostles and pastors and stuff. And I would watch them when they were not around the congregation and the, and the things that they were going through, the ailments that they were still experiencing. And I, I further concluded by getting to know them, by reading them and getting to know myself, that all sickness and disease starts in the spiritual realm first because of their doubt, because of their negative self-talk when they wasn't in church. But yet when they came in church, they acted as if they were blessed and highly favored and stuff. And based upon the things that I had been through in my journey, when I got to my place where I was experiencing dis-ease and disharmony, and I put two and two together, that it was my thinking, and I became accountable for my energy. So this is all the stuff that I put together to understand me, and it is truthful as far as energy is concerned. Because even when I consult with other people and I'm reading them, I don't be judging these people based upon no trauma because I've healed my trauma already. I just be reading them like because it's be like when you have this gift, it's like a screen play that's playing in front of you where you just know this stuff about this person. You're not being ugly with this person. You're just reading this person because that's what you see on the screen. And so you tell them what you see on the screen and they be like, oh my gosh. You like a, you know, Miss Cleo or whatever. And you ain't trying. To, I don't be trying to be like no Miss Cleo or nothing like that. I just be telling the people what's on the screen. You know, so with my work that I've been doing with people, that's how I know. It ain't a book though. I can't give you to a, a book on that one. I wish I could. If somebody else in the comments know about a good book. But I read a book. Some things come to some people. Do like in the biblical text through fasting and praying <laughs> to sitting alone with God, you know? Okay. All right. Let me see. Let me wrap this up. Uh, talk about it. Balance. I say God is in everything. Yes. That's why I asked. Okay. Yeah. The book Heal Your Body by Louise Hay speaks on the spiritual side of disease and how to cover it. I heard of Louise Hay. She would talk in the mirror. That's the older white lady that would talk in the mirror about, you know, I love you. She'd look in her, her eyes or whatever. I love you. So yeah, if she have a book, I didn't read that book. I just saw her on, um, on YouTube. But yeah, thoughts become things. Okay. Uh, not really. No, as far as what? As far as the religious practice that they have, Gwen? What would be my thoughts? As far as their power, abilities to be spiritual? For is their beliefs what? <laughs> hey, Miss Keeping It Real. Thank you for passing through, babe. I'll be watching your videos. I'll be liking your stuff. Oh, the fasting aspects. Yeah, fasting is very, very important. Those thoughts, fasting is very important. Fasting gets you to a level of getting to know yourself at a cellular level. Fasting for me has changed my life. I've always, well, since I became conscious, ate pretty clean. But this last fast that I went on for 90 days, it's like got me into energetic portals on a deeper level. It allowed my ears to open on a deeper level. If you pay attention to me when I'm in my zone, you know, since a lot of the introverts probably be here, the introverts like to sit back and read the room. You could actually read and see that I'll be in a zone sometimes. Like when I was talking about the 144, if anybody was here yesterday when I was talking about that, the 144,000, the day before yesterday, I'm sorry, the 144,000 video that I did and I posted on the YouTube channel, I was in another plane. Though you saw me, I was flowing and words was being spoken through me to tell you all. Fasting does that. Me, my, my ability to read people on my consultation, it does that. You know, it, I, it's not that I be trying to get people to become vegans or pescetarians or whatever. It's, it's that I be trying to get people to meet God like I meet God like that. Because it, it supercharges your body to another plane where you could literally hear voices. That's pretty. It's like you're out of your body watching your body say something and break something down. But both, the, both versions are you. You talking to you. And it's such a beautiful thing. Fasten to that. Vivid dreams come with that. Mental clarity come with that. Peace comes with that. The ability to recharge your body comes with that. The ability to draw people to you comes with that. Fasten is so very, very important. And it reminds me of in the biblical text how they say, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that is proceeded out of the mouth of God. And once you put that knowing that you are, you are 
tapped in to source energy and you're trusting that I don't have the words. I just want you to speak through me. Man, you get into those Akashic records. You get into subconscious mind. You don't need no drugs or nothing to get you there. You just be on point. You know, and you also the observer. You're like the student and the observer of you having a speech. And you're like, dang, the teacher side of me is really seeing some impressive things. Because if you pay attention to when I'm speaking, and you'll know this because I ain't looking at the words during this time. I probably say something really, really fast. And then I'll take a really, really deep breath. And I'll be like, whoo, that was good. It's me talking to the spiritual side of me. But yet I am the student and I am the teacher. That's the only reason why I feel that I'm able to jump into those type of realms. That's the only reason. Yeah, my third eye is open. But man, when I begin to fast, it was just another level of it. Fasting is so important. It, it, it hydrates your body and delivers so much oxygen to the body. And it, it brings you so much cellular. I mean, I'm talking about the cells of my body. If I could explain this as best as I know how. It's like the cells of my party, my body are having a party. And like, wee! They're on a really, really high. And I don't do no drugs. <laughs> I'm, but if I would have ever did some day going drugs, I would say this is really a good drug. But it's a natural dimethyltryptamine drug where you can get on an E4 type high just by fasting. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Gwen, I ain't talking about no drugs, no. <laughs> I figured that's why, yeah. And so the, some of the people, you know, would be like, where is she, you know, where you from? Yeah, that's what you see in me flowing, you know, flowing in my gift. That's what you see. And I, and something when I'm doing it, and I'm telling on myself, because I know I got some introverts that's probably out there reading me anyway, so I don't care about that, because I know how you are, and I know how you think, because I am you, and you are me. But when I get to this place, I'm probably not even looking at the screen because I don't want to be looking at no numbers. I don't, I don't really want to even be looking at myself because I'm already looking at myself. If you get my drift, I'm already looking at myself, having experience with myself. I'm already talking to myself and watching myself talk to myself. I'm already, while most often than not, when I'm on my line, I'm already having an out of body experience at that time in place. Y'all probably don't see it. But I'm telling on myself. So when you see me do it again, you'll be like, oh, this is what she was talking about. Or you can watch that 144,000 video that I, my last video that I post on my um, YouTube channel. I was doing it. And at the end of the video, I said, oh, that was beautiful. That was me. That was me coming back into me. Fasting through that. Discernment of spirits, quantum jumping, it's all because of my fasting. Not because I'm lucky and blessed, it's because of my ability to focus and be disciplined with my body. It brings you to other realms. And if you don't do anything, get to know yourself on that level. I'm telling you. Because you can heal yourself. You can find out everything you need to know about yourself and about other people when you get to that level. I promise you. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Always so beautiful to be in your energy field. So divine. That's all magic. Wow, you is amazing <laughs> thank you greatness yes in and away from yourself in and away from myself at the same time okay oh wait before i go let me show y'all one thing a new product that i made for my website it's called be calm be calm is a body soaking solution that i i use when i take um baths um which i don't take baths all the time i do showers but and when I do take a bath, I use this Be Calm solution. It is really, really high in magnesium, essential oil, the um, proper salts. It detoxes the body. It also um, has aluminum-free baking soda to alkalize the water. So this will work by relaxing the body, soothing muscles, opening up the um, pineal gland, detoxifying the skin, dead skin. It'll lift it off. Like when I take a bath with this here, a pet peeve of mine in the physical reality is when you have the little crusty heels in the bottom of your feet in the summertime. Well, if you take a bath in this here, because it's high in magnesium, it softens your skin, but it also softens that little crusty stuff on the heels of your toes. 
I mean, to use your feet. I'm talking about to the point where you take a towel and it just glides off. This stuff is so good and it smells good. It smells good. It's high in vitamin C as well for your body. And so you're doing this transdermally, basically. And what that means is that your skin is the largest organ on your body. What you put on, you penetrates inside your body. So you're penetrating a bunch of magnesium, a bunch of um, sodium bicarbonate, which alkalizes the body, a bunch of vitamin C and essential oils that is needed for the body to detox. And it smells good at the same time. Anyway, it's available on the website. I'm so proud of this. I just created another product on my website. You ain't got to buy it. I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> the, the right people that's going to buy it, they're going to come. I just wanted you to hear about it. I created something else because I'm a creator, creatine. And another thing, before I get out of here, it also helps with fasting. It helps you get ingredients to make and create. Everything available on my website, I created it. And guess how I knew how to put the team together? Through my dreams. And a dream. When man sleeps in sunburst, God will give him his orders and instruction. I learned how to create every little product. And I got about a good 20 or something products on my website. And they work. I created it because I can hear now. I listen. And I'm attuned to that frequency. So when you get here, there's, there's, there's benefits to doing this. Benefits from getting to know yourself. Benefits from fasting. There's so many benefits because now you opened up to everything. Now you know everything. So now you can manipulate energy. It's almost like you got the keys to something other people don't have. Okay? All right. Let me wrap up. Wow, exfoliating. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Let's see. We are thinkers and creators. You are the universe and you're creating your own reality in this realm. May the hope most high continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings to you. Okay, I'm getting out of here. This video was from my heart to yours. Be blessed, babe. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.